Okay, so let's see if you know enough algebra to solve this equation. And what we have is x squared over 4 is equal to negative 4, and we're trying to solve for the variable x. All right, now the great thing about this problem is there's two levels of correct answers. So you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what are you talking about? Well, if you've taken like maybe Algebra 1, at least first year Algebra, uh, you should be able to come up with an answer that is this, and that will be correct for your level of Algebra. But if you know more Algebra, like Algebra 2 or beyond, well, you're gonna come up with a different answer, which is also correct. So either way, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you both solutions in just one second. Then, of course, we're going to talk about what makes these two uh, answers different. This is really important stuff in mathematics. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here we go. We have x squared over four is equal to negative four. Now, what is x? Well, x is obviously a variable, but it's a number, okay? So you can kind of think about this. I'm taking some number and I'm gonna square it. So if I have, let's say three and I square three, that is what? Well, that's nine. If I have negative three and I square that, what is negative three squared? Well, it's negative three times negative three, which is also a positive nine. So we have some number, whether it's positive or negative, and we're squaring it, and then we're gonna divide by four, and the answer is a negative four. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct solutions. So for those of you that, uh, you know, maybe have taken uh, first year algebra and uh, uh, have some experience with these type of equations with x squared, this is what we call a quadratic equation, you may have answered no solution, which is correct for your level. But if you know more than uh, first year algebra, especially like algebra two, you may have come up with the answer plus or minus four i, which is also correct. So it really depends upon you know your level of mathematics. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I understand this, but I don't understand that. Well, I'm gonna explain all of this in just one second. So if you came up with the either answer, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus, and no big deal if you don't understand, because I'm gonna explain it right now. All right, so here is our problem. And I kind of uh, was trying to give you a bit of a hint here with this uh, negative three squared, that's equal to a positive nine. Three squared, positive three squared, is equal to a positive nine. Now, assuming you know a little bit about positive and negative numbers, you know that if we have a negative number, uh, the only way we can end up with a negative number when we are dividing numbers is we have a negative divided by a positive, that's negative, or a positive divided by a negative, that's negative, okay? So in other words, we can't end up with a negative answer by taking a negative and dividing it by a negative, that's positive, or positive divided by a positive, that's positive as well. So if you just kind of stand back and look at the big picture, and for those of you that know basic math and a little bit of algebra, you might be uh, looking at this problem and be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm a little bit confused here because this number, no matter what we do, whether X is positive or negative, uh, when we square it, we're gonna have a positive value, right? So positive, uh, divided by positive, there's no way we can end up with a negative answer. And you're absolutely correct, okay? Now, let's just kind of think about it, uh, the problem in this manner. Let's just get rid of this uh, negative four here for a second. And let's suppose uh, the answer is four, all right? So now here, I'm thinking about, all right, what number squared such that I divide by four is gonna give me four? Well, hopefully, you can see that the answer is four, because four squared, divided by four is positive four. Four squared is what, four times four, or 16, right? 16 divided by four is four, right? We cross cancel one factor, and we're left with four. But uh, if you're saying, well, I'm not sure what the answer is, okay? Is the answer negative four? Well, if you answer negative four, well, that's wrong as well, okay? But again, you could be confused based upon your level of mathematics. So let's talk about a few basic things and this is stuff that, um, you know, uh, those of you that have taken at least one year algebra, 
should understand. Okay, so I'm going to kind of break this up real quick. So when you study pre-algebra, you know, for the most part, you know, uh, you don't study these type of equations. These are called quadratic equations, okay? So in pre-algebra, you do the little basic equations that are called linear equations, things like this, and that's perfectly fine. So pre-algebra is kind of like algebra light. You're just kind of warming up, uh, you know, in terms of taking a full algebra course. Now, if you've taken an actual one-year full algebra course, you're definitely going to learn how to solve quadratic equations, and this involves the quadratic formula, factoring, and a whole bunch of algebra. So you'll certainly remember or know if you've taken those type of courses. Now, in Algebra 1, and of course it all depends on what kind of uh, you know, teacher you have or what textbook uh, that you're using, you typically don't study what we call imaginary numbers, right? This is, uh, you know, for the most part, pretty common to really get into at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, Intermediate Algebra uh, level. We're talking about something called the complex uh, number system, okay? So again, the answer to this problem, for those of you that are Algebra 1, it will be no solution, okay? Over here in Algebra 2, you're going to uh, answer plus or minus 4i. So I'm going to talk about all this right now because really the thing here uh, that separates the two answers is what number system you are considering. But uh, before we get into that, let's just talk about uh, the algebra here, okay? So for those of you that know some basic algebra, so let's say I had this equation, x over 4 is equal to negative 4, okay? Well, here... Uh, this could be a proportion. In other words, I could put this uh, negative 4 over 1. Now I have one fraction equal to another fraction. Okay, So this is a good kind of way to think about this equation. And you could simply cross multiply. Okay, So x times 1 is x is equal to 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16. Okay? Now let's just go ahead and check the answer here if x is equal to negative 16 in this equation, right? So if x is negative 16, I have negative 16 divided by 4. Is that equal to negative 4? Well, indeed it is because a negative divided by a positive is negative. So no problems here as long as I have a linear equation. In other words, x uh, to not a uh, uh, second power, right? It's just x to the first, okay? But this strategy of thinking about this equation in terms of a proportion is a pretty good strategy. It's not the only way to solve this problem, but it's a good uh, uh, approach. All right, so let's go ahead and think about this in terms of a proportion. So I'll have x squared over 4 is equal to negative 4, but I'm going to put that over 1 so I can kind of think of this as two fractions. Now I'm going to cross multiply. What I'm talking about here is a concept in proportions. Again, when you have two equal fractions, you have a proportion. So like one half is equal to the fraction three over six. Well, there is a property of proportions called the cross product. Again, a proportion in mathematics is one fraction that's equal to another fraction. Okay, one half is the same value as three over six. But uh, when you have a proportion, two equal fractions, the cross products are true. In other words, or the cross products are equal. So 1 times 6 is 6, and that's equal to 2 times 3, which is also 6. All right, so this property, this cross product, is how we solve these type of equations. So again, I have this uh, fraction over here. Okay, I'm like, all right, I got a fraction. If I could think of this as a fraction, you can make anything, or you can think of anything as a fraction, just put it over 1. Okay, so here... I'm going to put that over 1. So now I have negative 4 over 1. Now I'm looking at a proportion. Okay, so now I can just go ahead and cross multiply in this manner. And when I do that, I have x squared times 1. That's x squared. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. All right, so now I have x squared is equal to negative 16. Now, depending upon what type of calculator you have, okay? Matter of fact, uh, for those of you that just have a basic calculator, I'm going to tell you to do something in just one second, but let's go ahead and talk about uh, this type of equation in algebra. Okay, so x squared, again, is something called a quadratic equation. It's what we call a second-degree polynomial. Now, this little 2 up here, okay, indicates how many solutions this polynomial will have. Okay, so it's going to have two solutions. Now, what type of solutions? Well, it can have two real number solutions or two imaginary or complex number solutions. Now, I want to get into this in just one second, but let's suppose 
we just have x squared is equal to 16. To solve for x, I would simply take the square root of both sides. So x would be equal to positive and negative 4, right? Two answers. Again, we have a quadratic equation. We're looking for two solutions. So x would be equal to positive and negative 4. All right, now let's go back to our actual problem here and have x squared, I'm going to erase this here, x squared is equal to negative 16. Now again, we use the cross product to get to this stage of the game. Now to solve for x, I would take the square root of both sides. Now this is kind of algebra one level stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what the square root of negative 16 is equal to. So if I go into my calculator, I go, all right, what's the square root of neg negative 16? Depending upon your calculator. If you have a real basic kind of standard calculator, your calculator is going to be like question mark. It's going to be like, hey, uh, I don't understand what you're talking about. You're typing in some stuff. I don't get it. Matter of fact, you got to be careful. You might see some smoke and flames come out of your calculator. Your calculator is not going to understand that. Okay. Now, why is it? Uh, why is your calculator not going to know the answer? Okay. Now, I'm talking about a basic calculator because uh, the square root of 16 is what? Well, the square root of 16 is a number times itself that gets us back to 16. So 4 times 4 gets us back to 16. And negative 4 times negative 4 also gets us back to a positive 16. So your calculator is like, hey, I don't get what you're, a uh, you're asking because I can't come up with a number times itself that's going to give me a negative value, right? So the only way you can get a negative value is a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. So most basic calculators are going to come up with something like error or, you know, it's going to be like very confused on that question, okay? So why is that? Because your calculator is thinking or working in something called the set of real numbers. Okay, so when you study basic math, you study, you know, or you start off learning what we call uh, the real number system. So you have zero right here, and then you have one, two, and three, and then you eventually learn about negative one, negative two. These are the integers. So one, two, and three are the natural numbers or counting numbers. Then we add zero. We have the whole numbers, and then we have these numbers. These are the integers, and then you have rational numbers which are uh, any numbers that we can express as a fraction of integers, maybe like one half, right? And then we have irrational numbers, which are numbers that are non-terminating and uh, non-terminating, non-repeating decimals, and, uh, numbers that we cannot express as fractions or what we call irrational numbers, things like the square root of two, et cetera, et cetera, or pi. Okay, so that is a real quick look at the real number system. So going back to our equation here, we have x squared is equal to negative 16. Well, there's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, and the fundam fundamental theorem of algebra states, hey, listen, uh, there are two solutions to this uh, equation, okay? But uh, you're not going to find them over here in the set of real numbers, right? You may have to look over here in the set of complex numbers, right? Now, before I explain the complex numbers, I'm going to explain this, which is an invitation for you to support this YouTube channel. I'm all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting, right? At least that's my goal. But, uh, you know, I also have another goal, and that is to reach as many people as possible on YouTube because I'm the happiest when I am teaching as many people as I possibly can, right? But this is not, you know, easy to put out the amount of content that I put out. You know, it's kind of a, you know, a passion of mine to teach. But, uh, you know, I put a lot of effort in to try to really hit on topics and subjects in mathematics that I know uh, oftentimes confuse a lot of people or try to inspire people to keep learning as much math as possible. So I definitely could use your support. And all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, but uh, before I continue on and explain the rest of this uh, problem, if you're interested in learning you know, from me, my best work is always going to be in my full uh, courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So if you need help with Algebra 1, well, go to my Algebra 1 course. If you need help with Algebra 2, well, go to my Algebra 2 course, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So it all depends on what level of math you're at. And if you're not even taking a math class, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was doing this stuff way back in 1972, and maybe you want to relearn your uh, 
all that lovely math that you forgot, well then check out my math skills rebuilder course. Here I teach a bunch of uh, basic math, algebra, geometry, and a ton of other things. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the differences between the complex and uh, real number system. Okay, so here we have the real numbers. We just talked about it. And the real number system, again, is pretty much what you're, what you're going to be working with, you know, all the way through when you start, you know, elementary, primary math, through middle school, through about like algebra one. Okay, you're going to be working in the real number system. But there comes a time, okay, I'll kind of draw it this way. There comes a time where you need another number system. Okay, so algebra one, you know, works fine for solving equations like x squared is equal to uh x squared is equal to 16, but if we have a situation like x squared is equal to negative 16, well, the real number systems are not going to be enough. We're going to need to explore uh, the complex number system, okay? So typically, you start learning about this at the second year algebra level, and the thing to realize is that the real number system is part of what we call the complex and imaginary number system, okay? It's technically the complex uh, number system, and complex numbers have this form, A plus B I. There's a real component and there's an imaginary component. Now, I don't want to make this uh, video too, too much longer because my the math teacher in me just loves to teach, so I got to kind of wrap it up. But let me just go ahead and tell you real quick what the definition of an imaginary number is, right? So some of you might be like, boy, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I imagine I never had to take math or have to take math. Listen, I totally get it, but it's not that difficult. So an imaginary number, matter of fact, let me just show you a complex number like four plus two i. That's what a complex number looks like. It's no big deal. This is the real part and this is the imaginary part. So let's just talk about an imaginary number, something like two i. Well, what makes this an imaginary number is this little I business right there, okay? This is not that hard. So what I is equal to is the square root of negative one. There you go. That is the secret to the complex number system. So an imaginary number is uh, equal to the square root of negative one. If you can remember this, well then uh, you, know, you pretty much know a lot about the complex number system. Now, of course, there's a lot of other stuff, but this is gonna be enough for us to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, put our knowledge to work. So we have x squared is equal to negative 16. So now I wanna take the square root of both sides. So I wanna take the square root of negative 16. Now, because you know some basic algebra, you know that you can break up negative 16 into uh, factors. In other words, I can write that this way the square root of 16 times negative one, all right? So the square root of 16 times negative one. And here I can break this up, uh, this one big uh, square root into two separate square roots. So this is the square root of 16 times the square root of negative one, all right? So the square root of 16 times the square root of negative one is equal to the square root of 16 times negative one, which of course is equal to the square root of negative 16. But the awesome thing about doing that is that we now can take the square root of this positive 16. That is positive and negative four for our purposes because we are solving this quadratic equation. And uh, we're gonna multiply that by the square root of negative one, which by definition is i, okay? The imaginary uh, number or imaginary part i. So the solution here is two unique solutions. One is a positive four i, and the other is a negative four i. Okay, now I know a lot of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, my hair is standing up. This makes me uh, more confused about math than ever. Well, I pretty much covered, uh, I don't know, a good two, three years of algebra. You know, I went through uh, pre-algebra, you know, algebra one and a little bit of algebra two in a few minutes, right? So to really learn this stuff, you gotta take your time and just learn one little concept, one little skill at a time, but hopefully this makes sense. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.